In this video, we're going to discuss how to set up and run a system SSL transfer using CA XCOM data transfer. The first thing we'll need to do is to go into OMVS. And then once inside here, if you want, you can uh, switch to a directory that you plan on setting up and uh, saving your key database that we're going to create. And once you're in that directory, we're just going to run uh, GSKKY man. It's an IBM utility uh, to set up and create a key database along with uh, create certificates. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new database. So option one. And then just follow the prompts on the screen and we're just going to give it a name and a password and things like that. And for this demo, we're just going to use the default value for a lot of things. Um, also, you're given the option to use FIPS mode or not FIPS mode. You need to set this up in the beginning. Um, once you choose one of the options, you can't uh, switch it to it later on. So for this, we're going to use non FIPS mode. And we can see the database was created. Okay, now the first thing we'd want to do is to create a new certificate authority. So for that we're going to go and we're going to create a self-signed certificate. Again, what we're setting up here is just for demo purposes and uh, to get everything up and running to test in-house beforehand. You should not be using the self-signed certificates in production. You should contact your security administrator to have them um, link you to their key database and their certificates. If anything, you might just need to import their certificates to your key database that you're making. So once in here, First thing we're going to do is to create a CA certificate. And again, we're just doing this for test purposes, so we're just going to go through quickly. We're just going to label this CA for certificate authority. We're going to give it a common name. And then there you can specify how long the certificate's um, valid. And then now that we've created the certificate authority, we're going to create a client and a server certificate. So again, we're going to create a self-signed certificate. And we're going to do the user or certif server certificates. I'll call the first one the client. After we finish that, we're going to do the same thing to make a server certificate. Okay, and that finishes, uh, completes everything that we needed to do to set up our key database and to create uh, the certificates for the client and the server. 
and now we can exit out of OMBS and next thing we're going to do is we're going to edit the configuration file to point to this. So before we do that we're going to first exit and just make note of the directory that you uh, made your key database in and if you need to just also um, the name that you made it. Okay, now we just want to browse when you, during the XCOM install you specify the USS directory for sample files to be created in and we're going to look for the file the sysconfigd ssl.cnf and we're going to edit that file. And this file is just the sample file that has set up for um, the key database and things like that. So we're going to go through and the first thing we'll change is the keyring file. We're going to change the initiate side and the receive side to be the database that we just set up. And if you, then we're going to do the keyring password. We're going to enter that on the initiate side and the receive side. As far as since we're using the same thing, it's going to be the same. And in here, you can see the passwords um, plain text. But if you look in our document, uh, there is an ability to encrypt the password and insert that. And then if we just go down, you'll look and you'll want to make sure the initiate side and the receive side for label cert is uh, the client and server. That's the name for the certificates that we used. And also, if you noticed, uh, there's an option for cipher for the initiate side and the receive side. By default, we set it to all ciphers um, except for the null ones. If you want, you can specify in there different options like triple des or things like that. We list some of the options in our, our documentation. After that, if you go further down the configuration file, there's more parameters, but for now, we're just going to leave those at default. And we're going to exit out of here, but make note of this entire directory in the file because we'll need that to actually put in the XCOM configuration file. Okay, now we're just going to browse to where we have our XCOM configuration file. And we're going to edit that member. And we're going to need to change a few things. First thing we're going to need to do is um, add the XCOM config SSL directory. So in here, we'll paste the entire directory that we just had saved. And then we'll also need to change a few other things. If we just page up a bit. And we're going to look to see that we had SSL set none previously. So we're going to set it to allow. And we're also going to change the SSL version to system because that's what we just set up for the key database. And then we'll just need to specify an SSL port. And if you wanted to, you could also specify an SSL v6 port. And after we change that, we just want to exit out, save that file. And now um, you're going to want to restart your XCOM server that's using that config file so it picks up those new parameters. And after we make those changes, we're just going to go back into our sample transfer job and we're just going to make a few changes to this to make this work for it. So the first thing you'll need to do is change the destination in the Cisno one that port to be your uh, SSL port that you just specified. And you'll also need to add on to the end um, secure socket equals yes. This is just telling XCOM that you want to do a secure transfer. And after that we're just going to hit submit. We can see we got a return code zero. And if we look at our output log for the job, 
we will see um, that it's starting a secure connection with the destination port. We are see we see that we're using T our TLS version 1.2 in non-FIPS mode because we specified the non-FIPS on uh, the key data when we created it. Also, there's a FIPS option inside the config file that you need to specify. And you can see the handshake was completed and then we transferred our file successfully. And that concludes how to set up and run a system SSL transfer using CAXCOM.